But I'm always amazed that, you know, people have said to me, and I had to kind of agree it. We're like, oh, what a terrible year. And then they go. At the top of the list of those who are canceling the cancel culture is Bill Maher. Bill Maher, among many other well-known figures, has played a significant role in the demise of the woke culture. Let's get right to Bill Maher's comments from his episode with Quentin Tarantino. But in order for us to keep seeing each other in the future, please make sure to click the subscribe option before we begin. Looking at Bill Maher's own views on woke viewpoints, we can see that he insisted that people cease talking about things that happened in the past. He advised people to stop being shocked every time they watch an old TV show or movie and discover that some of the concepts in it are old. Bill used an article by Molly Ringwald as an example in which she discussed how in the Hash Me Too era she considered The Breakfast Club and other films to be quite problematic. Maher did not mince words when he responded, stating unequivocally that she was shocked by the scope of the ugliness. Oh please, they were teen comedies, not snuff films, she said. It's hard for me to understand how John Hughes was able to write with so much sensitivity and also have such a glaring blind spot, the woman said. Bill Maher attacked the woke Hollywood for mass shootings happening in America. He said that the industry is somewhat responsible for it because it glorifies movies and television shows with gun violence. Bill Maher attacked Hollywood in the last part of The Real Time, saying that despite being the wokest place on earth, the industry mostly creates mass-produced movies in which heroes use firearms to solve all of their issues. They detest it when proponents of gun control argue that it takes a good person with a gun to stop a bad guy with a gun, yet they constantly create films with that exact premise, as Maher put it. He continued talking about how sensitive scripts are. They hire sensitivity readers to go through and edit scripts. They have intimacy coordinators on set to chaperone sex scenes. Disney defied the don't say gay law, and another studio spent $10 million to digitally remove Kevin Space from a movie. But they do nothing about the unchecked romanticization of gun violence. Strange. The one that genuinely possesses a trigger is the one item we don't refer to as such. Well, if we think about why all this criticism by Bill Maher is arriving, we see several actors and celebrities joining calls on Congress to pass gun reform legislation in response to the mass shooting at an elementary school in Uvalde, Texas. 19 children and two teachers were massacred in this brutal shooting. You accumulate skills as you go forward. You get better. That's why I'm telling you, I think your last one was the best one. While explaining why people should stop revisiting the previously created shows and finding the wrongs in them, he said, it's nuts to blame someone for not being woke 30 years before woke became a thing. I remember the ADS being woke means you had too much cocaine. More recently, 20 years ago, the jokes on Friends were just funny he said. These days, however, some millennials, some, I applaud the sane ones, find the joke sexist, transphobic, and fat shaming. About the old school romance, he said, the most beloved and wholesome act in history was the Beatles, but even they wrote, she was just 17, you know what I mean, which today sounds a little Roy Moore-ish. Among the most upfront celebrities was actor Matthew McConaughey. Being a native of Uvalde, he recently lobbied at the White House to restrain gun violence. Matthew put forward the suggestion of a national red flag system, background checks, and changing the age limit for legally getting access to a gun. He suggested raising the age to 21 to buy an assault rifle and a waiting time before buying them. However, Maher's take on this incident was a bit different. He expressed that Hollywood should focus on its role in portraying these shootings as something cool. He thinks glorifying films and shows about mental health issues and illegal access to weapons are the main reasons why mass shootings happen. He said, and we quote, when liberals scream, do something, after a mass shooting, why aren't we also dealing with the fact that the average American kid sees 200,000 acts of violence on screens before the age of 18? The comedian said, and that according to the FBI, one of the warning signs of a potential school shooter is a fascination with violence-filled entertainment. Not only that, but he mentioned the movies that seem a part of the problem to him. But before we continue, please consider subscribing to our channel so you can stay updated by us. The movies Bill Maher believes to be troubling are films like Django, Unchained, and The Punisher. In both popular and well-admired stories, the hero uses guns to take revenge. They call them action movies. They should call them revenge movies because that's the plot of every one of them, he said with a scuff. He further added, and there's a sick similarity in the revenge fantasies Hollywood turns out and those of school shooters. 
The shooter in Uvalde was an 18-year-old boy named Salvador Ramos. He was reported to be bullied before he dropped out of high school and proceeded to kill students and teachers at his former elementary school. Listen to this story. There's a law professor at the University of Illinois, Chicago, named Jason Kilborn, who's... He said, the usual suspects on the far left will say that I'm delivering some sort of conservative rant here or that I'm undermining gun control. No, it's neither. It's just what's real. This week on HBO's Real Time, Bill Maher talked a lot about China. He was first mentioned when he discussed how people were freaking out over the Chinese surveillance balloon above Montana in his opening address. Maher remarked, now they know where we keep the cows. He pointed out that the Chinese are disputing the balloon's use as an eavesdropping device. That's what TikTok is for. Meyer was not with anyone who wanted to water it down, demanding the calm. Bill said, we have to watch till it crashes and burns like we're doing with Kanye. According to Bill Maher, such tactics were a try to change things by screaming and yelling at everything instead of working through the problem. By sharing the tale of Jason Kilborn, Bill Maher offered us the best of his observations. A university professor at the Illinois Chicago School of Law named Jason Kilborn has come under fire for allegedly acting in a way that unnerved certain students of color on campus. It's pretty common to include hypothetical questions in exams, so it's not surprising that he used two racial slurs in a hypothetical question about a black female employee suing her employer. The next thing we know, though, is that he was the subject of a complaint. Before going back to work, he had to complete five self-reflective essays, sensitivity training, and a campus ban. We can call this situation the modern version of what the Red Guard was doing. Maher said, if you can't see the similarities between Kilborn and that the person who needs re-education is you. On Real Time with Bill Maher, Maher said to Tarantino, one thing I, before we run out of time, I want to say to you, I have, besides the great entertainment, I have always really appreciated the way you pitched back. When anyone tried to stifle you, shut you up, shame you, bully you, they tried it with the last one with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Something about Margot Robbie doesn't have enough lines. And you do what I wish other people would do. Instead of apologizing like a little I don't, uh, I don't agree with your assessment. Now, since both of them are great scriptwriters and do understand each other's standpoint, Quentin responded to this statement of Mehar saying, yeah, if somebody brings up something that is actually legitimate, I'll even have a conversation with them about it because I'm actually into an interesting thought and I don't even have to agree with you. But, oh, that's an interesting point. Now, am I saying don't make these movies? No, not at all. I've never forced While agreeing with Quentin, Marr added his view saying way more, certainly to the awards. We can certainly say that both of them are not all that for the woke culture, focusing more on the norms and rules of the new society, but rather on the artistic integrity of their work. Finally, he brought up the fact that Winston Marshall, the former banjo player for Mumford & Sons, was forced to resign from the band and provide a pathetic apology for his support of a contentious book. How much do you believe Hollywood contributes to the violence that has become the norm in our society today? Tell us in the comments below. To be the first to know about any updates from us, be sure to engage with this video.